This podcast is about the capital allowances for small business corporations, as well as the capital allowances for manufacturing assets. We will firstly look at small business corporations. There are two special capital allowances for a small business corporation, as provided for in Section 12E of the Income Tax Act. The first one is for plant and machinery used directly in the process of manufacture. These assets can be new or used, and the allowance is not apportioned. This means that the taxpayer claims the full allowance, although the asset was used for only part of the year. The percentage applicable to this capital allowance is 100% and it is claimed in the year that the asset is brought into use. So the full cost of the manufacturing plant and machinery of a small business corporation is claimed in the first year. If we look at an example where this is a small business corporation and it acquired the manufacturing asset on 1 January 2016 and brought it into use on that date as well. This company's year of assessment is 31 March 2016 and the cost of the asset is 300,000. So because this is a small business corporation manufacturing asset, I will claim the 100% in my current year of assessment because it was brought into use in the current year. So it's a 300,000 cost times 100% is 300,000. So the full cost is claimed in the year that it is brought into use. The second special capital allowance that a small business corporation can claim is for other movable assets. These are any assets used in the taxpayer's trade that are not part of the process of manufacture, for example, vehicles, furniture and computers. The assets can be new or used and the allowance is not apportioned. The cost is claimed over a period of three years. 50% in the first year, 30% in the second year, and 20% in the third year. If we look at an example of a small business corporation that acquired a vehicle in the 2016 year of assessment, brought it into use on 1 January 2016, and the cost is 150,000. So because this is a movable asset of a small business corporation, I will utilize the 50, 30, 20% allowance. And because this asset is brought into use in the current year of assessment, the first year that it is brought into use, I will claim the 50% allowance for this asset. 150,000 times 50% gives me my 75,000 deduction. Let's assume that this asset was brought into use on 1 January 2015, which is in my previous year of assessment. I will thus also use the 50-30-20% rule, but because this asset was brought into use in 2015, I would have claimed my 50% allowance in that year. So in my current year, 2016 year of assessment, I will claim the 30% allowance on this asset. So I will take my cost of 150000 and multiply it by 30% to get my 2016 deduction of 45000 This is why a timeline is very useful when you deal with assets, because you can clearly see that the asset was brought into use for the first time in 2015. Therefore, I can see which percentage is applicable to the 2016 year of assessment. Now we are going to discuss the Section 12C Capital Allowance. As I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, you must first determine whether the business entity is a small business corporation. When it is not a small business corporation, then your next step is to determine the nature of the asset that you are dealing with. If this asset is plant and machinery used directly in the process of manufacture, then a Section 12C allowance can be claimed. This allowance can be claimed on new or used manufacturing assets and it is not apportioned. The percentage applicable to this capital allowance depends on whether the asset is new or used. If it is a used asset, in other words second hand, then 20% of the cost of the manufacturing asset is claimed every year for 5 years. The first 20% will be claimed in the year that the asset is brought into use. If the manufacturing asset is new and unused, then this asset is claimed over 4 years. 40% of the cost is claimed in the year that the asset is brought into use and 20% of the cost in the following three years. Let's look at a few examples. This company is not a small business corporation and it acquired a manufacturing asset um, of 100,000 and it was brought into use on 1 January 2016. This asset is new and unused. 
So I will use the 40, 20, 20, 20 rule to apply to this asset. And because it is the first year of assessment that I brought it into use, I will use the 40%, which is my first year allowance. I will multiply this by the cost of the 100,000 and this is my deduction for this asset for the first year of assessment. If we assume that the company has brought it into use in the 2015 year of assessment and it is still new and unused, then I will use the 40, 20, 20, 20 rule, but I will apply the percentage applicable to the second year of this percentages, which is the 20%. So in the previous year, I would have claimed 40%, but in this year, which is now my current year of assessment of 2016, I will claim the 20%. So I will take my cost of 100,000 and multiply by 20% to get my 2016 deduction. Let's assume now that this asset was used, it's second hand. It was also brought into use on 1 January 2016, which is my current year of assessment. And I will thus use the 20% allowance, which is claimed over five years, because it is a used asset. And therefore, the capital allowance is the cost of the asset times 20%, which gives me a 20,000 deduction for the 2016 year of assessment. Another thing to take note of is the deduction of moving costs relating to assets claimed in terms of Section 12E and Section 12C. If the moving cost is incurred in the year that the asset is brought into use, then this amount is added to the purchase price of the asset, and the total amount is claimed over the number of years that Section 12E or Section 12C prescribes. For example, if we acquired an asset of 100,000 during the year of assessment and also incurred moving costs of 10,000 to bring it into use on the same date. Then the moving cost will be added to the cost of the asset to determine the cost, the total cost of the asset, which the capital allowance percentage will be based on. So the moving cost is added to the cost of the asset and then the 40% is applied to the full amount. If the moving cost is incurred at a later stage though, for example, in the second year, then the moving cost is claimed over the remaining period that the capital allowance for this specific asset can be claimed. For example, if the capital allowance percentage that is applicable to my asset is 40, 20, 20, 20 and I incur moving costs in the second year, then it's clear that there is three years remaining that, these, that this asset can be claimed over. And that's why I will take the cost of the moving um, costs, the 10,000, and divide it by three years. That's the three years that is still remaining over the period that this asset can be claimed. And my deduction for this year will then be 3,333. Thank you.